sci-fi-christian.com. I'm Benny Bono, and I am going to be talking to you today about Philip K. Dick's novel, Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said, which is a fantastic title, if only the book as a whole was as fantastic as it's uh, the title that it bears, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so basic plot of this book to the extent that, that matters when you're reading Philip K. Dick, is you've got a guy uh, who named Jason Tavener who is kind of this worldwide famous musician or whatever, and we're set in, surprise, surprise, a dystopian future. Um, Jason's part of this genetically modified group of individuals called Sixes or Sixers or something like that. So that doesn't really come into the novel a ton, uh, but it's there. So he he's this famous guy, wakes up one day, and nobody but him remembers who he is. So it's like he just all of a sudden doesn't exist in the world anymore. Uh, his music doesn't exist. None of his friends know who he is. None of his family know. Nobody knows who he is. And so, okay, we have a pretty interesting setup. And then, of course, the rest of the novel is him trying to figure out uh, what happened. But since he is, unfortunately for him, in a Philip K. Dick novel, uh, things are going to get very bad for him in a hurry. So great setup, right? Uh, this is exactly the type of thing that you want uh, from a Philip K. Dick novel. You know, right there we can see we've got a lot of the usual suspects in his work. Dystopian future, check. Uh, blurred reality, check. Genetic modification, check. You know, and we're just with that one paragraph summary that I just gave. So we'll, we'll get even more Philip K. Dick uh, elements in this novel as we continue to talk about it. Um, so why am I a little bit negative on this, given that it seems like good plot, you know, this is kind of what we would want from a Philip K. Dick novel. Well, this book is a complete mess. It's a complete and utter mess from start to finish. Uh, and because we're talking Philip K. Dick, that's not necessarily a complaint, but it certainly isn't a compliment either. I, I think he, you know, when you sit down to read a Philip K. Dick novel, which this is not the place to start, so if you've never read one from him before, don't start with this one. But I've read enough of his stuff, you know, short stories, novels, uh, by no means all of it, but enough where, oh, and if you've just watched the movies that are based on his work, that doesn't count because his novels are completely different. So you have to... Uh, you actually read his work to say that you've experienced some of Philip K. Dick's stuff, because even the good stuff that's based off of his work just doesn't count. It's not even remotely the same as what it's actually like to read it. Uh, but anyway, so as I was saying, I've read enough of his stuff to know that when you sit down with a Philip K. Dick novel in hand, you're going to expect a certain level of messiness, a certain level of weirdness. There are standards and expectations that you might have for another novel, any other novel, that have to be thrown out the window for Philip K. Dick. So that's not only fine, but that's part of what the attraction is when you're reading his stuff. So I'm okay with that. I, I can roll with that. Um, but even within the context of Philip K. Dick, there's good mess and bad mess. So good mess would be we're going to get a lot of weird stuff. There's maybe going to be some irresolution. We can expect some wild plot twists that may or may not entirely make sense with what's come before. And that's okay. The bad mess is that this book doesn't really know what it wants to be. It, um, and unlike a lot of his stuff, where it seems some of the random elements seem to flow really naturally, this one just feels really, really clunky. Like he changed what he wanted to do halfway through. So I'll get into a 
couple minor spoilers to explain this, uh, but nothing too big, so but consider yourself warned or whatever. So, you know, we start out with this basic plot of Jason Tavener, he's on the run, whatever, you know, we, nobody remembers who he is. And that's exciting for a few chapters, and then the book just gets really, really dull for a long time, and nothing much happens. Um, we get introduced to some other characters who show some interest in Jason. The police are kind of interested in him. You know, he's getting the whole fake ID thing, and it looks like that's going to go one way where that's going to backfire on him, but oh, it looks like it's okay. So we kind of have some dead ends narratively. We have some uh, false starts, and, and we get this long period in the middle where things kind of happen, but none of them really lead anywhere. And it's all really, really dull and ultimately pretty pointless for the book as a whole. And then about 70-ish percent of the way through, uh, things actually start to kick into gear and the book picks up again. Uh, but the problem is it feels almost completely disconnected from what's come before. And so it's good stuff, but it's like, wait, you know, we just read this whole dull middle section and it doesn't seem to actually be contributing to what's now happening in the book. Uh, there's this is giant disconnect and not in a Philip K. Dick way where it's like, oh, this, these two parts are, seem really weird, but and normally they wouldn't go together, but we're reading a Philip K. Dick novel, so whatever, we just go with it. No, this just feels like uh, I was writing the novel this way and now I'm going to take this left turn and right it this other way, and because what happens at about the 70% point is we get introduced to this whole drug subplot, so surprise, surprise, there's another Philip K. Dick usual suspect in terms of theme, uh, which, okay, whatever, and, and so we get introduced to this major subplot involving drugs, and it eventually becomes the main plot involving drugs, which eventually leads us to the explanation such as it is for what's going on with Jason uh, in the novel. And all of that's fine, but it doesn't fit with what came before. Um, the whole, and it, it's better than what came before, but again, we're 70% of the way through the book, and now we're just pulling this plot out of nowhere uh, and running with it, and that's going to be what the book is about, and there's characters who are important in the first half of the book who just disappear. And, uh, they, they don't matter anymore now that we're at this point. So really disjointed narrative, uh, which is probably turning into a disjointed review as I try and explain it, so you feel my pain, uh, or at least I'm passing it on to you somewhat. It kind of feels like Philip K. Dick took his favorite themes, uh, threw them in a blender, and just hope for the best in terms of what came out. Um, it, it's an absolute mess. Now, that's not to say that the book doesn't have any merit. I mean, its biggest problem is, isn't the disjointed nature, though that is a problem. The biggest problem is the huge chunk in the middle that's just boring, uh, where nothing really seems to matter, and we're not really saying anything, we're not exploring any ideas, it's just kind of there and it's dull. Uh, so that's the book's biggest sin. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a difficult book. I had thought this was one of Dick's more famous works and more popular one. And maybe it is, and if it is, I don't entirely see why. There, He's written a lot of stuff that's better than this. And if you want your characteristics, uh, Philip K. Dick weirdness, you can get it in a narrative that actually works better than this one does. You know, Ubik is really good. Clown or Clock World is, is really good. Uh, Penultimate Truth, I think, was what I read earlier this year. That was really good. You know, so, and then you got your classics, Man in the High Castle, and uh, Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep, which just forget all about Blade Runner before you sit down and read that one, because they're nothing alike at all. Uh, so you have Philip K. Dick books that hit on these same themes. You know, Scanner Darkly is another really good one. Uh, but they do it in such a way that where the narrative is actually successful. This is not a successful narrative. This is a failed narrative. Now, it's an interesting failure for uh, 
a big portion of the book. If you take out that Dell part, what happens at the end is interesting. It becomes an interesting book, but it's still a failure, ultimately. Um, so it, it's difficult to describe in some ways because that's just how Philip K. Dick is. He's a difficult author to review uh, because there is so much weirdness and disjointedness that's inherent to his work in a good way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I accept all that, I recognize that as part of reading Philip K. Dick, uh, but I felt like this novel had those elements, but not in a positive way, not in a way that flowed well, even by Philip K. Dick standards. So, interesting read. If you're a Philip K. Dick fan, you'll probably get around to this one eventually. If you're not a Philip K. Dick fan, uh, haven't read him or looking to get into him, don't start here. You know, start with one of those other ones I mentioned or read some other plot descriptions of his books and see which one seems interesting to you. But this is not a good starting point. Uh, two and a half stars for Flow My Tears, the policeman said. Interesting book at times. Um, interesting mess, but still a mess, still a failure. Can't necessarily recommend it, uh, except to you diehard Philip K. Dick fans. Go ahead and have at it. Uh, maybe you'll enjoy it more than I did. So two and a half stars for Flow My Tears, the policeman said. Well, that's all for now. I'm Ben DiBono, and this is the Sci-Fi Christian Book Reviews.